I picked this part because it was the most intact and I didn't think it had any breakage on it. And then as I was working with the bracket that goes for the uh, ear controls, um, I found out that this ear was broken and, and re-glued and in the process of scraping and, and cleaning up for new carpet, I found that this corner is broken out. Now I have most of the pieces, so I'm probably going to try to glue it to get it started. And then I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna, going to uh, continue. I want to set it up so that I can put that tab on there. And then I've got the sheet metal piece that normally would go over that tab. And that complicates it a little bit because that sort of makes it thicker. But um, well, I'm going to see what I can do to, uh, to repair, reinforce that, and, uh, and make that corner right. And, um, and then I need to finish the, the uh, upper part so we can set the two pieces together. Well, I'm going to start by uh, using some 406 and trying to glue these pieces back into place. This is going to be a little bit challenging. They all kind of came apart. I bought, also bought a new bottle of uh, 406. Um, it's got a shelf life of on the order of, um, they claim 15 months. And my old bottle has exceeded that. So um, I was, it seemed to me that it wasn't um, being as effective as it had been in the past. So I'll just stick those guys together. Of course, trying to stick my gloves to it. Yeah, punched a hole in them, but you know, that's what happens. Yeah, that's better. It definitely stuck quickly. Um, I wear the gloves to make sure I don't glue my hands to anything. Let's see, within. Um, Within seconds, these two pieces are glued back together. This won't be the final fix for sure. Um, this is just a starting point to give me uh, give me something to work with. And let's see if that that hole will be lined up if I do that. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. All right. The beauty of that super glue is that it bites really fast. And so you get some strength on the part literally within seconds. Now that's just the start. Now I'll have other work I have to do. I'm going to try to repair this tab. Um, I've um, I've acquired one of the uh, Harbor Freight um, uh, so-called plastic welding uh, kits. I mean, there are kind of three ways to approach this. One is uh, super glue, cyanoacrylate. One is um, urethane or epoxy two-part. Uh, which I also have, and the third one is to try this plastic welder, and and perhaps in some combination, um, each one has its strengths and weaknesses. So what I've done so far is I I got as many pieces of the old tab as I as were here. Um, there was one chunk over here that's um, that's missing. Everything was captured inside of um, one of these tabs, uh, metal um, speed nuts. And when I opened up the speed nut to uh, take that tab out, it was in multiple pieces. So right now I've got the tab glued in. Then I took the metal uh, bracket 
and normally this bracket would be turned around the other way. I have it upside down right now. So that what it'll do is it'll prov provide a, a backstop to this tab. Uh, and then what I intend to do is I'm going to take the plastic welder and try to fill in around this tab, around the, the screw hole. And once I get that somewhere close, I'm going to try to embed a piece of screen in there um, so that I can um, add a little bit of material and add some strength to the tab. And we'll see how that works. I don't have a lot of hours of time on using this tool. I've practiced with it a little bit and it seemed um, it seemed to work pretty well. But being that there are a lot of fumes in this plastic, I'm going to get my uh, chemical respirator on just to make life a little more comfortable. Hard to get this to stay there. I'm just pushing it, trying to get it to embed a little bit into the base material here.
tight quarters, it's hard to find the right angle to put the tool in here. Let's see what we can do here. Be very careful not to damage the cord. It's going to build this layer up a little bit higher. Make the tab just a little bit thicker. You can always sand it or come back and melt it down a little bit. Make sure it's thick enough. Hopefully that's enough strength. And I know I'll have to come back through on the back side and uh, drill the hole back through. But that's not hard to do. Okay. Now well, that takes care of that one. Let we'll it cool down and take another look at it. Now this is the top, the cons upper console piece, and its challenge is that the, the boot, I'll call it, that goes around the parking brake lever was missing, and all the little posts except one are broken. Um, I'm going to see if I can do some plastic welding on it. I have it in place and held with a clamp. My second choice would be uh, to use that same hot glue, since it's plastic, to rubber. Uh, it's, it looks like it's steel coated in rubber. And see if the hot glue would hold it in place. Uh, there are some extra holes down here, so I might do belt and suspenders and end up doing both. The challenge is getting down in these holes to do plastic welding. It's, um, it's not trivial, I'll say. Because, you now can I get the tip in there? It looks like I can, just barely. So, I'm going to take a stab at this. I don't know if I can get it hot enough down there to get, make it flow properly, but... And I don't want to melt through to the other side. I think originally these were hot staked in place.
The only real question will be whether or not it adheres in the bottom of the hole or not. And I'm trying with the tip to get the get it to flow and connect down there. Alright, now I'm going to move down to the bottom one. And this one's got an actual post, so I'm going to try to flow it right into there. As long as I was doing this, I already had my hot glue gun idling over here. And just for extra measure, I'm going to put a I'm going to put a bead of it along here. And then there are some holes down here in the bottom. And I'm just going to put a bead in there. Spider webs. Get those on off. All right. Well, I'm going to let both of these sit and cool off for a while, and I'll be back. All right. Well, this one has sat now for about half hour. The um, hot glue has changed color. I mean, it's gone back from clear to milky. Um, so I've got that in a number of places. The, the other plastic is hardened. So let's see whether it holds together or whether I'm going to be disappointed. Let's see how we do here. Kind of felt like it was overkill, but nicer to do it one time than uh, have to take it apart and do it again. It looks pretty good. I don't see any gaps in it. It's um, right there, and the um, just yanking at it here a little bit. It looks and feels solid. Seems like it's not moving. Must be a success.
the clamp held it in place and incidentally I, again I was using some of my spare carpet as a uh, up against the plastic so that the clamp didn't do damage and this part I've been cleaning up with a little bit of a very 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 fine um, it's like um, fine steel wool grade uh, scotch Brite pads just to clean a little bit of the junk off and I've polished with some uh, some Meguiar's uh, plastic it says it's for clear plastic it's a cleaner for clear plastic but I've been using it in a few spots to take out some blemishes I mean the plastic isn't going to be perfect if I really wanted it better I would probably need to sand it down and and respray the whole thing with flat black or something because it's just it's not perfect it's got some blemishes but I think for right now um, I think it's good enough um, as I was looking here's my um, here's my brand new shift plate and it it's not perfect even as it comes out of the mold it's it's not bad it looks nice but the I'll say the the grain and the and the plastic when you when you pop plastic out of the mold and you run it as molded um, it's a challenge getting a perfect finish so this one will be fine I mean it looks nice and I think that looks nice I need to get the switches over and the lid over and, uh, and then that one should be good and I don't have a good measurement I'll call it on you know what's a good how strong this tab needs to be but looking at it from the front over here looking at it from the front it looks pretty good it's still got you know, there's still a little divot there but the um, plastic welder process looks like it went pretty well I could still fill in a little bit with some urethane um, I could use the plastic welder on the front side but from a smoothness standpoint some of this I'd be better off just uh, filling the remaining gaps with a little bit of glue but from a solid uh, from a from the standpoint of is it solid it feels like it I don't see it flexing I could probably just leave it alone and drill the hole out and put the tab on but the perfectionist piece of me will probably want to finish filling that tab but with the uh, screen embedded in there I don't think the tab is going to fall off it's not coming it's not going anywhere it's got some flexibility and when we're done that holds the heater controls and this bracket will drop in there and sit here on that shelf and it'll just be bolted up to hold it so I think that's good. It's a nice addition to my tool kit. Alright, I'm just going to rough this up a little bit. I've got some 60 grit. good and I have some left so I'm just going to add it to the back here just use it to kind of reinforce the plastic weld material and that looks pretty solid I'm going to let it dry and if I need to do any slight uh, cleanup afterwards I can 
drill a hole and get to the bracket fits. All right, well, the glue's now had a chance to set. And I'm going to use a sanding block and some more of this 60 grit paper that I got. And I just want to level this up and smooth it out. Kind of see where the hole's supposed to be go there. switch to something a little finer here. I forget, I think that's 150. Okay. And I guess while I'm at it, this is some um, 3000 grit. I've got some 1000 and 3000 and um, I'll just smooth that off just for the heck of it. This one's been used, it's actually not got a lot of... There we go. That just makes it look a little nicer than the rough surface. But what I've been working on, blemishes on on the smoother parts of the plastic. In, in some cases I've been using 1000 or 3000 to take out a blemish. Um, But you got to really be careful because, you know, these parts are generally supposed to be flat black, and so the more polishing you do on them, if, if you use 3000 grit, it'll get really flat and it'll have some scratches, fine scratches in it, and if you polish it, it'll be glossy, so it's kind of hard to hit a, I'll call it a happy medium. Let's, um, I'll bolt this bracket on the way it's supposed to go. put it in the middle. And that looks like where the old hole was. So let's kind of wanted to support it from the back to make sure that, that I didn't overload it. I've got one of these sheet metal nuts. Let's see if I can get that to go on there. It's a little thicker than it used to be, so... Just make sure it all clamps up right here. There's one there. It looks like all the holes line up. Tabs fixed. Strengthened, anyway. A lot better than it was before. Let's see how it looks when it's all together. screws in here, but that's where she's supposed to sit. Well, there we go. I got the switches transferred over. I got the cover transferred over. I've got this all cleaned up. As long as we're, as long as we're at it, here's the shift plate that will, there it goes. You have to spread the console a little bit wider for the plate to drop in properly. Just for a moment or so. 
Okay, and the holes line up. I've got, don't have all the screws down here, but there we go. Cleaned up. Boy, that looks nice. Nice console, fresh carpet, got the vents in, got a bezel, I've got a couple of bezels actually. When we get it out there, yep, the carpet all trimmed out nicely. I'm happy, that looks great. Turn around, we got, got the other side, kind of the same way. Turned out good. All right. Well, now I can continue on. I still have some other work to do in the car to get um, before I can put the carpet in, but getting closer. Oh, one last thing while I'm here. Um, I talked about getting a um, yard of carpet. Um, that's a, a yard in fabric terms. It's a running yard. So this piece is is three feet long by what was it? I think it's 73 or 74 inches wide so it's basically six feet wide and and three feet long or vice versa so it, it was easily long enough to be able to get these parts out and, uh, and go down both sides and then there's still there's still a batch of it here that if I decide I need to do kick panels or something like that, I could do that. Alright, well that's that's all for the moment.